Hey, what's up everybody? Jake here and welcome to The Hobby. Obsidian Flames has been out for less than a week and this set is seeing a really shaky launch right now. I can already find booster boxes of Obsidian Flames going for below $100 and I can find the Elite Trainer boxes going for as low as $37. We've definitely seen some pretty big drops in prices from recent sets, but I think this is actually the biggest one we've seen in recent memory. It's been less than a week and prices on booster boxes are already going for below $100. And this sentiment can be spread throughout all of Scarlet and Violet. I can find booster boxes of Paldea Evolve going for below $90, and the same can be set for Scarlet and Violet base. These are really big drops in prices, especially for a set that is supposed to be more expensive than older booster boxes. The official retail price for these Garland and Violet booster boxes is $165, and the official prices for the Elite Trainer boxes are $50, but on the secondary market, it's a completely different story. These drops in prices are so significant, I'm not sure local car shops are making any margins at all on Pokemon Seal products right now. This is a completely different story from a year or two ago when local car shop could sell pretty much any Pokemon card product at retail price or above that even and still make a huge profit. So the hobby has completely turned upside down. So what's really happening with Scarlet and Violet? Why is the sentiment so different right now? Unfortunately, it's a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. A lot of people are expecting a continued decline in terms of Pokemon Seal product prices. So with that, a lot of people are simply saving their money. They are not excited about the recent Scarlet and Violet releases. Scarlet and Violet Base, Paldea Evolve, and Obsidian Flames just haven't been major hits. There are cool cards inside of these sets, but even Charizard is unable to continue to carry the Pokemon company right now. A lot of collectors simply are expecting prices to continue to decline, and I'm in the exact same boat. Normally, I would be extremely excited about booster boxes going for below $90 because that is a huge discount, but I'm simply not excited to pick up Scarlet and Violet Base or Paldea Evolve for $90. Even at those low prices, I'm still not excited about these sets. And the crazy thing is, I don't think we've seen the bottom yet. Most likely, these sets are going to continue to drop in price, but how low can they seriously go? Stores are losing money at any lower price point than that, especially when you're considering labor costs, shipping costs, taxes, and all kinds of other fees that they have to add on. They are going to have to start selling booster boxes at a net loss which is crazy because booster boxes were going for full retail price. $144 for a booster box was what you were charged at local car shop a year or two ago, and you were happy and excited to pay those prices for Brilliant Stars and Silver Tempest, but no one in their right mind would be paying full retail price for any of these Scarlet and Violet sets right now. The sentiment for these sets have simply shifted way too far. So most likely this will continue to be a self-fulfilling prophecy where a lot of people simply think prices are going to continue to drop. I'm in that same boat. I think prices are going to continue to decline. I just don't see an end to it. Perhaps we can see sub $80 booster boxes, which would be mind blowing. That would be an ultimate deal. And I think at that price point, I just have to pull the trigger. Maybe I'll actually pick up some booster box case. I normally don't do cases just because I don't really need that many booster boxes. I don't have the space for it. And I'm not really excited to hold that many booster boxes in a closet for 20 years. I prefer to display my sealed products as much as I can, but at those sub $80 price point, I think that's an absolute steal. There's no way that that's a bad deal. Those booster boxes will most likely increase in value long term. It's just that the sentiment immediately right now is that they are just not exciting. But I do believe those sentiments will change significantly over the next five to 10 years as these Garland Violet new sets really start to age and perhaps there's some more excitement there. So for now, I'm gonna pass on picking up any Scarlet and Violet products, even though they are showing incredible deals right now. I think the prices are just gonna to continue to decline, but I also wanted to touch on another interesting topic, which is why has Scarlet and Violet simply not been that exciting for a lot of collectors? And you are free to share your own sentiment. I think that there are a lot of potential reasons. I would love to hear about why you are really into Scarlet and Violet 
or why it just hasn't resonated with you as a lot of the older sets has. And I'm gonna bring up a couple of different points that I think are just not exciting for me personally. Even though these sets contain a lot of interesting stuff, they contain special illustration art rares, they contain more hollows. There's a hollow inside of every single booster pack. There's two holographic reverse inside of every single booster pack. So this should be a significant step up from older packs, but it simply hasn't been the case. So let's bring up some of the points that I've noticed personally. The first big one I think is that increasing the amount of holographic reverse has not really increased the excitement or joy of a pack opening. Why is that? The first big one, I think the holographic reverse pattern for Scarlet and Violet is just a little bit dull and boring. When I'm sorting through my Scarlet and Violet Pokemon cards, I'm noticing that I'm missing a lot of the holographic reverse because the hollow patterns on these reverses are so dull, I can barely recognize them as holographic reverses. I feel the hollow should really be popping, eye-catching, and a lot more exciting. The Pokemon Company can do that. I know we've seen a lot of exciting hollow patterns in the past. On the Japanese end, we have some really shiny and very blingy hollow patterns, and I simply do not know why that has not transferred over to the international and English side. There are some really cool hollow patterns out there. The holographic reverse from the Scarlet and Violet era has just been really dull and maybe they'll make it more interesting next year. They'll sometime revamp hollow patterns after a year or two. So I'm really hoping that we get some better looking reverses. And I think these hollow reverses, because they are doubled inside of every single booster pack, a lot of people simply see them as junk cards nowadays, which is an unfortunate step down because people barely saw them as hits in the Sword and Shield era. And now in Scarlet and Violet, holographic reverses are seeing even worse rates. And the other big issue I have with Scarlet and Violet is while there are illustration rares, I think the pull rates for these illustration rares are just few too far in between. I think I would be a little bit more interested in opening up a lot more Scarlet and Violet if I pulled more illustration rares. Now I know that's gonna drop the value of illustration rare cards, but that simply doesn't matter. I want to have a fun pack opening experience and I would like to be able to collect all of the illustration rare cards. There can still be really expensive or rare illustration rares like the Charizard EX. However, for regular illustration rares, cards like the Ninetales, cards like the Curlia, I want these cards to be a little bit more often to pull. Right now, I think you're seeing around one illustration rare inside of every single nine to 12 booster packs. And I think you should see them a little bit more often. I think you would see them one illustration rare in around every six booster pack is a little bit more exciting. I think this is why I'm just really into a set like Crown Zenith because those illustration rare cards, those Galarian Gallery cards just pop up a lot more often. Even the ones that aren't that special or interesting, there's a ton of Galarian Gallery cards that are going for sub $1.00. But when I pull one of them, I'm still really excited and happy because I see it as getting an additional hit, even though it's not a super expensive card. And I think if the Pokemon Company can take away anything from this first year of Scarlet and Violet, is that it's a real learning experience. They revamp the pack opening experience. They revamp the pull rates for a lot of these new packs. And it just hasn't resonated with a lot of collectors. And so that I think is the biggest issue is that while the pull rates have significantly improved, a lot of collectors simply don't see it that way. So that's my two major big improvement points. Improve the amount of illustration rares that you pull and improve the hollow pattern on the holographic reverse. And I think you'll have a much more exciting pack opening experience. So those are my major points. Let me know what your thoughts are. Has Scarlet and Violet been fun for you? Has it not been? And what are your major issues or concerns or excitement when it comes to Scarlet and Violet? Has it been fun? Has it not? I would love to hear about it from your perspective. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.